Attention. Group master so after finishing my DMC5 100% run, I decided to go for something more relaxing. I am slightly upset right now. Neo is one of those titles that goes like, hey, have you ever heard about Neo? Oh, it's a, it's a soul like, yeah, the one with the samurai, right? Uh-huh. The one where the last boss has a Glock or something, right? No, that's Sekiro. Oh yeah, um... What the f*** is Neo then? And here is the core problem about Neo. It doesn't really stand out as something amazing and cool immediately. Most people that probably got the game on PS Plus played it a bit and went like... So yeah, it's another one of those Souls-like games, but this one is extra brutal. Okay, next game. That was me until I did the unthinkable. I actually beat the game three times and oh boy was that an experience to behold. So to explain this new iceberg, because everything needs to be called an iceberg now, it's just a thing. So to uncover the mysteries of this game, I welcome you, ladies, gentlemen and all other types of Homer Simpsons on this wonderful adventure. Do you know what Shungite is? Anybody know what Shungai is? And to aid me on this wonderful and mostly painful journey, I decided to summon one of the best Souls-like game enjoyers, Faraz Khan. <laughs> and this man may look like a wholesome fitness enjoyer, but don't be fooled by his looks, ladies and gentlemen, as he is a secretly created You're cyborg ninja. ninja produced to fight the legendary mercenary Solid Snake in Shadow Moses. So, quick question. Are you human? Nope. This man got a complete no hit run in Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls 2, Bloodborne, God of War and a lot more other crazy challenges. So from like speedrun, challenge run point perspective, how did you enjoy Neo? Hated it. <laughs> Hated it. Oh, it was one of the worst speedruns I've done. So what is this thing called Neo? Well, according to the most trusted and non-biased information pool, and I'm talking of course about Charlie Moist Critical, Neo 2 2020 Action Adventure Soulsborne game, developed by Team Ninja and published by Sony and Koei Tecmo for PlayStation 4, as reviewed by Charlie and Jackson. Wow, amazing. Thank you, Mr. Moist Man. In fact, can we get Charlie on the screen right now? Oh yeah, that's a lot better. To really explain what Neo is, we need to take a step back and move to a time where this was considered funny. God's internet was wild back then, holy. Dark Souls has just came out and oh my Jesus, it was everywhere. Races for Dark Souls, shooters for Dark Souls. After their climax, everyone would yell how it was just like Dark Souls. It was everywhere. So it was only a matter of time when people would try to jump on the hype train. And they did. Robot Souls, Shooting Souls, 2D Souls, Boring Souls, and finally, in 2017, Weeaboo Souls. See Miyazaki? They did Samurai before it was cool. Just, just admit you stole from them. I bought the game on release because, well, just look at that. Katanas, demons, Dark Souls. I was basically screaming, sign me the fuck up. Turns out, the game was a bit hard. And the thing about Neo, it literally fires a machine gun of information on you and goes like, okay, have fun. I like that there is close to no handholding, but Neo is just so overloaded with mechanics and things that you should know but never actually taught. Shinji, crank that, soldier boy. And I don't really agree with this approach of teaching you how to play. Most of the information literally are whooshes past you, and you feel like you are playing the game wrong, which to be honest, you probably are. But it would be mostly fine if the game wasn't so impossibly difficult. Especially Neo 1. All the enemies one-shot you and obliterate your health bar in seconds if you make a mistake. Then Neo 2 came out in 2020 and the game fixed some of the problems of the first title and added some new amazing features, but some of the core problems were untouched and overlooked and some just feel extremely lazy and cheap. But first things first, let's talk combat. 
one of the main reasons Dark Souls got a little bit stale for me is waiting for my stamina to go back. I mean, the general gameplay of Souls games is to get two hits in, roll away, wait for the stamina and do it all over again. The only way to spice up the game is Pyromancy, Sorcery and Miracle. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, Miracles. And we'll touch that a bit later. For now, let's talk about your average Sword Knight, Andy. Straight out of the bat, the game offers you a weapon of choice. And there are quite a few to choose from. Katana being your basic boring weapon that I really like, Spear being the most broken weapon in the game, Double Katanas which are really boring, an axe which is actually quite good if you time your attacks correctly, and Kuserigama which I found to be the most fun weapon in the game. If you compare Neo weapons to Dark Souls, holy shit it's not even close. In Neo you have 4 stances. High stance, where most of your attacks will go from top to bottom and you feel like the direction of the attack doesn't matter but just you wait. The attacks hit very hard but consume a lot of your stack, I mean key, and are also quite slow. Also in this stance your dodge is a gigantic roll, which feels safe, but sometimes can be a bit awful, because you are moving very far away from your enemy. Middle stance is kinda like your balance option, which usually involves thrusts and combining defense with the offense. Your dodge is now a large sidestep, kinda like in Bloodborne. And low stance is my favorite. The attacks fly very quick, but deal very little amount of damage and consume small chunks of your key. Also your dodge transforms into this amazing Sekiro-like sidestep, which is amazing to stay on top of your enemy and apply pressure. Also there is a sheathed stance, where your weapon is sheathed and it doesn't really do anything, but there are some weapons that take advantage of this stance and deliver some really cool and powerful attacks or buffs. Now the general combat flow is very different from Dark Souls and usually is the main thing that gets you killed. You see, in Dark Souls if you run out of stamina it doesn't really change much. Sure, if you get unlucky you will get punished, but you can always wait a second to do a quick roll most of the time. Well in Neo if you run out of stamina you fucking die immediately. When your key is down you suffer a guard break and the next attack will deal double the damage it does usually. So to not run out of stamina, the game has this amazing mechanic that's called a key pulse. And what that does is every attack you do leaves this white bar near your stamina. And if you press a button at the right time, this white bar will turn into your stamina. Kinda like that orange HP in Bloodborne. In fact, can we get Ludwig the Holy Blade from the hit game Bloodborne on the screen right now, right here? Oh yes, much better. What that means is you have to pay attention to not only your attacks, your enemy attacks, but also your key, which is really fun and adds very unique, almost rhythmic feel to the game that makes it stand out. You can't go mashing random buttons, you have to know exactly how many attacks you need to do and what attacks you can and cannot afford, which is Amazing, but, but I'm, I'm not, not done, done yet. Instead of one weapon art, you have five or sometimes even more because you can bind some weapon arts to different stances. For example, you can have the nothing personal kid slash on the mid stance and I have watched Jojo a couple of times slash on your low stance, which is honestly insane. Oh. And when it comes down to combos, they usually do something really good, like the kick for example. But what they will do is cut some of your recyclable key, which is not very cash money. So sometimes you have to make a decision to either do a full combo or just throw in a couple of slashes and call it a day. It is that decision making that makes this game really interesting to play. Some weapons are just straight up ridiculous. Just look at this for example. It seems like you boys are not ready for my stripper move. Holy shit. This is the best game there is! I changed my mind actually. This game also features a really good type of ranged combat. You can use rifles, bows and cannons and not like in Dark Souls where a crossbow deals 3 damage on a good day. In this game if you get a headshot you fucking die! You can literally snipe people from across the map which is just awesome. If you are good enough you can use these weapons in a more tight fight to literally cheese any encounter. If you're just starting on this game, use the bow and the rifle literally all the time, it is really necessary and not just a gimmick. 
There are also ninjutsu and magic that are in the game, and holy Miyazaki, they are just awesome. Basically, on every bonfire you can prepare these jutsu things, that are pretty much infinite consumables, that replenish every time you rest. The amount you can prepare is dependent on how high your stat goes, and going forward you can unlock some pretty ludicrous stuff. Ninjutsu being mostly about dealing big damage or applying poison and paralysis to your enemies, and magic being all about buffs, debuffs and elemental damage. And let me tell you this right now. Both of these mechanics are busted. And I mean busted. During the post game magic is pretty much mandatory, but using it in your normal playthrough just downright trivializes most of your fights. Look at this big boy for example. This guy is pretty tough. Now let's do some magic. Now he's a little punching bag. Buffs and debuffs in this game are so strong, it's stupid. You have a little millennia oh blade of god, soul. This is the worst thing in any video game that's walking as a normal enemy. Boom! Now it's a grunt from Halo. What is this? Nikocado Avocado? I didn't know he was interested to be honest. Boom! Get Harry Potter! You can even do it with bosses, making them a joke. You can craft a shield that will deflect all the projectiles back at its user, and it's like, shoot me, you dumb fuck. Come on, I want you to do it. Bruh. 10 points from Hufflepuff, you muggle-ass bastard! In fact, I think they went overboard a bit in some places. During the late game, it is quite literally all about buffing and debuffing each other, which is just not that fun, to be honest. It is cool when you do it for your own enjoyment, but when it becomes close to mandatory, it is kind of a bore. And I remember back in the day when I was doing speedruns of Neo, oh, you would basically just break the game, but there was satisfaction in... Uh, for example, applying the spell Sloth to something, and then weakening it, then buffing yourself, and then hitting it three or four times with a punch, and then just destroying it in what would originally take you a lot of time to kill it through normal means, because most enemies in that game were pretty damage spongy. What a sad, sad gamer moment. In fact, can we get Keanu Reeves on the screen for a bit? just to lift everyone's spirit and make this video slightly more wholesome 100. Ah yes, much better. Let's talk about Neo 2 now. This is a piece of shit game, anybody who likes this is fucking stupid. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Neo 2 was one of my most anticipated games of 2020 and the game was good. It added the counter move which is just... Chef's kiss. Every time you do it, you get an erection immediately. It's just so satisfying. Oh, that move? Foolishness, Demon Man. Foolishness. I have upgraded my Royal Guard to max. Demon attacks get added, which are very cool and enjoyable to use. A lot, and I mean a lot of new enemies get added into the game, which is a literal blessing from heavens. Part boss. And also, you now have the DEMON MODE! Yeah! This is my demon mode! And also, the best thing in any video game ever, the cute cat. Go, my minions! Slay the beast! Bring him down! So basically, what I mean is... Oh, what? This screen-appearing gag has gotten annoying? Well, I will tell you what is annoying. This fucking game watermarked my PS4 footage, so now I have to come up with dumb shit to cover it up. Koei Tecmo, guys, you really didn't have to do this. Nobody will look at this game and think this is Candy Crush, okay? I'm so pissed off at this, I'm not going to show you the watermark on purpose. But really to understand what Neo 2 has improved, we first need to take a look at some flaws from Neo 1. The first flaw is pretty obvious, the amount of content. In the first game there was a very stupidly tiny amount of enemies. In the late game you only have to fight three of the same yokai, the fucking raven that can go fuck itself. You listening? Okay. <laughs> Grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, I hurt people. Boink! Your average politician and the flying girl that shoots at you from afar. And when that got stale, they started to literally stack enemies on top of each other, but a bit on that later. 
Niwa 2 has a gigantic pool of enemies that will make these awesome... What the hell is that? What, the, what, what? What? I'm not fighting that! No fucking way! Moments appear constantly, and the new enemies are all really cool and interesting, each with their own cool moveset, weak points and gimmicks. A plus and a pat on the back from me. Level design got changed a lot. There are a ton of new cool secrets that are well hidden, secret paths that let you cut corners or attack from the back, which is awesome. In some sections the level design in Neo is even better than the level design of Dark Souls, as usually instead of more linear sections you have two to three different paths to choose from, each with their own benefits. Overall the game seems far more polished and interesting, with even more weapons to choose from. You now have big mode katanas that were available as a DLC in the first game, Tonfast, which I didn't really use much, also available as a DLC in the first game double hatchets and the fucking Bloodborne weapon. Bloodborne alert! That's the third reference, three strikes, I'm out. So in Neo 2 I used a scythe, I didn't use any other weapon. I thought it was just cool. And you have a lot of range in with the scythe, which kind of breaks a lot of things too. Uh, makes, makes a lot of bosses easier, especially the people bosses when you can attack them at max range and you're not at risk of anything. Magic got even more busted as a result, because now mages have a weapon that directly scales from the magic stat, and ninjutsu feels most of the same. But in my opinion, Neo 2 didn't focus enough on the elements that actually mattered. And to really understand why it is so difficult to talk about Neo, we have to discuss the bad elements of the game. I have a question. God. Why? In my opinion, the gear system is very, very poorly executed. Basically, you don't just open the chest behind an invisible wall now, you open the chest and get random loot with random effects, with a random dick in your face. In this game, everything is randomized. The quality of the gear, the type of the gear, the effect of the gear, it all just feels like a mechanic from games like Destiny and Warframe, not a Souls-like game. Starting the game, it will be literal years before you find a decent armor that actually does something for you. Same thing with weapons, you will find a cool weapon and the moment the mission ends, you will throw it in the dumpster and get a new one, which is kinda underwhelming. You will get the blade of the legendary nostalgia critic and on the next area, a stick on the ground would be 10 times as powerful. And I know just a game that did the same mistake. You can upgrade the gear you have and increase its level, but it will literally cost you Ludwig's monthly revenue to upgrade one weapon. It is pretty much never worth it, except for when the game ends and you get your first legendary weapon. Then it is actually worth to upgrade. Of course, you can smith yourself new gear, but even that is done terribly. Again, everything is random. You will smith a katana and it has a random chance of being decent and a random chance of being a little rubber dildo that you can shove up your ass and think about playing a different game in the process. You will waste little hours disassembling your equipment and forging new one just to get 10 more damage and 6% less key consumption on a strong attack in the high stance. Incredible. Oh. And if you think that this is overcomplicated, I gotta say, I haven't even started yet. There is also a procedure to get your gear new effects, which is, take a guess, random. Gladly they fixed it in the second game, but still, the mechanic itself is pretty bad. The only thing that is executed perfectly is that you can pay some gold to make your items look like any other item in the game. Like, you can make yourself an armor that just looks really stupid and change it to some really badass armor, which is just so pleasing to the eye. But again, the process is very long and unintuitive, which just makes a lazy guy like me just forgetting about its existence. Everything about the gear is very bad. In fact, the gear itself is usually bad. The majority of armor sets are heavy, and I mean really heavy, making you consume a half of your stamina in one dodge. I already mentioned how important managing your key is, so wearing a heavy armor set is quite literally the same as shooting yourself in the foot. It doesn't really protect you that hard either. You will get like 100 more armor from a heavy set, which sounds like a lot, but in reality isn't. The only thing that is good about the heavy armor is poise, but it is pretty much useless against 99% of the enemies in the game, because they don't stagger. I really tried creating a heavy armor build on my X run, but it really didn't go well. At 
Oh, okay, not about the gear. Let's stop combat. The one thing I didn't really like about the first game is that there were too little human fights. In my opinion, fighting one-on-one -on -one with a human was one of the best things about the game. You have all of these cool parry moves that only work on humans and basic goose and grooves, but anything that is just one centimeter above your height you can't parry. A very sad day for the 5 and 6 man gang. So I hope that maybe Neo 2 will improve on that. It didn't. 99% of the enemies in Neo 2 are demons that you can't parry at all. Why even bother with this mechanic? You have so many skills dedicated to these awesome parry animations and they work like once or twice per mission. Why? Basically, every time I saw a normal human boss, I would literally scream of pure joy. Finally, some good shit. The story is an incomprehensible mess. In the second game, it is even more apparent than in the first. The game will introduce about 100 characters that like appear for a split second on the screen and then you have to be invested about them? I don't even know who this guy is to this day. Then you do a side mission for them and you'll get their guardian spirit and hear their backstory, which is pretty cool, don't get me wrong, but some of these characters literally mean nothing to me. I've seen this guy like once in a cutscene three years ago and now he tells me his tragic backstory? There are some good characters, like the protagonist of the first game, this absolute waifu material, Saika, the main antagonist, Yasuke and all the fucking Nabunaga, but that is all really. Who are you? Especially early on in both games, it is really hard to understand what the absolute fuck is going on. Oh look, they're having a tea party. How nice. Wait, what? How, how did we get from a tea party to this? What happened in between? It really feels like you are skipping cutscenes to make it look funny, but this is really how it goes. Who cares? No one cares about any of this. And skip. Wait a minute. Why am I a monkey and an oval? She isn't even the right music. Okay, now let's talk about the most important aspect of the game. The bosses. Making the mother of all omelets here, Jack. Can't fret over every egg. Over the years, it really makes me feel like the bosses have become one of the most important parts of any video game. Sometimes your game might be ruined by them, and sometimes the bosses are what makes your game memorable. And I think Neo did not execute boss fights well. Let me explain why. First of all, the majority of your boss fights are random yokai that you have never seen or heard of before. They just appear out of nowhere and want to rip your head off. Sitting here thinking I can't really put my finger on any memorable boss fight in both games. The only one I can think of easily is Oda Nabunaga from the first game and that is because I really like Japanese history. And the snake from the second game and that is only because Donkey died to it like 40 times. Oh, okay. No, that only counts as one, because that was a small snake. The fuck you out of nowhere works for small bosses like Taurus Demon, but let's be real. Will Taurus Demon be someone you remember immediately from Dark Souls? For me, it is those bosses who have some interesting lore background around them, or have some really cool and memorable movesets, or just look really badass. In Neo, there are not a lot of demons that look cool, except maybe for the frog in Neo 1, actually a really good fight too. It's usually either a huge monster that covers your whole screen, or some demon dude that looks like a D&D character made by a 14 year old. Guys, guys, you don't understand, he's like really dark and evil, he wields a katana and he's also really smart, but at the same time he's a bit crazy and unhinged, guys. You wake up in this old room, afraid and confused, but I am here to present you with a choice. In 10 minutes, guess! guess, 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 guess. Move you though, you have 10 minutes to remember one good boss fight from Neo. If you agree that all Neo boss fights fucking suck, guess! guess, 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 guess. Move you though, make your choice. 
Another problem of the bosses in Neo is the amount of times you fight them. Do you guys really think that I would like to fight this flaming tornado guy four times throughout the campaign? I didn't really enjoy him even during my first rodeo. In the first game you had to kill the first boss you fight about 10 times throughout the main campaign, Well, in the second game you only have to do it 5 times, which is such an improvement to be honest. Oh, and do we really need to fight the cat booba lady like 3 times as well? I guess that you want some R34 content as free advertisement, but she has like 4 moves, I want something new. And while we're at it, let's talk a bit about the boss mechanics as well, shall we? In this world I have 4 types of boss fights I absolutely despise. The kiting fights, the boss helicopter fights, the fights that cover your whole screen, and the summoning dudes fights. Well, I think Neo devs really enjoy these fights. For my money, when your boss does this... It's not really good. There are so many enemies that are just gigantic. Gigantic in this game. And while playing any Soulsborne game, your greatest enemy is the camera. And with these enemies, the camera becomes even more messy than usual. I think Neo boss design really peaks with these two fights that are just unbearable. This guy is such a pain in the ass, and when you consider how gigantic the attack hitboxes in the game are, he becomes even more obnoxious. Like seriously, how the fuck is this hitting me? A lot of the bosses, especially in the first game, had these fuck you moves that will one shot you instantly, which is also a pleasure. Now don't get me wrong, there are some boss fights that are pretty cool in both games. Basically all human fights are cool. This Sake boss in Neo 2 is amazing. This two-sided guy is awesome, although a little bit too easy for my money. And I enjoyed the Jason Momoa fight a lot as well. But bosses were never the thing that made me think that Neo is a hard game. The main problem about the game was how cheap some of the tricks it pulls are. The vast majority of these Souls-like games, try finger, but hole, yes I see, are very simple in theory, but what makes them actually difficult are the enemy designs. Let's take Dark Souls 3 as an example. The game is hard, but it never really seems unfair. Of course you have some moments that are harder than others, but it never really has these fuck you moments. And you see, the problem about Neo is that this game always does you dirty. You will see an enemy and 99% of the time it will have 2 to 3 ranged enemies with heavy artillery shooting at you while you attempt to kill it. Some of the times these enemies are almost unreachable. Of course you can just run through them, but I really dislike this approach. Every chest will have an enemy either above or hidden near. It literally overdoes this feeling of being in constant danger to the point where it is not a surprise anymore. On your halfway through the game you have already experienced all the tricks the game will pull on you. You see a chest? 100% there's an enemy near. You see an enemy facing their back to you? 100% there's either a small enemy nearby or a ranged dude up ahead. You start expecting the same dirty tricks on every corner and in case of this game you are pretty much never going to be wrong ever. Instead of adding new enemies or at least somewhat changing them, the game just begins to stack them on top of each other. It is even more obvious in the first game than it is in the second. These tango dudes are so ridiculously strong in the first game. They did nerf them a bit in the second, but in the first game they are tougher than some of the bosses you fight. And the game goes like, okay, you fight one tango, okay, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, now fight tango with four skeletons chasing you. Okay, fuck it, fight two at the same time. And the game will do the same thing over and over again, even to the point where bosses begin doing the same. I actually didn't mind this little neckbeard debate of a boss until I realized she can summon small enemies, which is just one of the best video game mechanics ever created. Then I go for a side mission and, you know, fight a boss, have a blast, and oh, what is this? Another strong enemy out of nowhere! Definitely did not expect this one, guys. Wow, now I have to fight two horse dudes that take half of my screen anyway at the same time? Awesome! And I gotta do it twice, even better. Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? Insanity is doing the exact 
same fucking thing over and over again. Expecting oh, shit. shit to change. That is crazy. Fuck you! Every single fight past midpoint of the game is literally the same. Strong demon and two range dudes. Over and over again, it literally never changes. It doesn't feel like a challenge, it feels like a cheap trick just to make this illusion of a difficulty, when in reality, it's just a hasty created, unfair situation. To take on many enemies at once is a full strategy to a quick death. W wow, really? I might try that if you stop fucking closing me with six enemies in a small room for one fucking minute. And all of these problems are even more apparent in the submissions. Instead of doing an open world game like all the good games are, am I right? The game decided to go for a mission type game. All the locations in the game are not connected to each other, they are only selectable as missions. Which is okay most of the time, unless you're doing a speed run. I remember it was Distortion doing it, Elias doing it, and like a few other people. At the time, on the leaderboard, I was number one, but Distortion just never submitted his, his run, so he was actually number one, it wasn't me. Doing a speed run of Neo was horrible. The movement was horrible, and the menuing and the navigation was probably the worst part. I, d I don't like the idea of like, okay, you finish a mission, you're waiting, okay, then you select another mission, then you go there, you're loading, and then you go and you do the mission, and you just run through, kill what you need to, kill the boss, stop, okay, wait, reselect another mission, go there, or if you, God forbid, select the wrong mission or select the shop or whatever, you lose like a minute. So... It wasn't a fun speedrun. But of course the game decided to add some side content, and as an absolute giga chat that I am, I have beat all the side content in the game, and let me tell you, it sucks. Like 90% of it is pure dog shit. The fuck you fight enemies at once fights are literally everywhere. There is not a single new boss you have to fight to win. If you get lucky, it will be a recycled boss or just another 10 enemies stacked on top of each other. All the quests add nothing to the game. Usually it's just one dude you might have heard about for a brief second before asking you to find his hairpin in a demon swarming hellhole. I actually am not lying, you have to do like three side quests for this lady to get her happy, it literally cannot get more stupid than this. The thing I also don't understand are the new side missions in Neo 2. I really wanted to beat all of them, but some of them are locked behind very weird conditions. Like one of them is locked behind a double katana mastery, what the fuck? It is literally my least favorite weapon to use and you are telling me I have to get out of my way to get a gazillion of mastery points to play this one mission in particular? What? The only good side missions are the duels. You are fighting a new boss, well most of the time it's new, and you are fighting a human which is extra fun until the game says fuck you and throws two of the strongest bosses to fight you at the same time. Well, it is hard if that's what you wanted, but it is very far from fun. And the game is just overflowing with jankiness and laziness from all corners. Brilliant but lazy. The game has this feeling about it that is really hard to describe. Okay, this analogy might sound a bit strange, but it feels like these cheap plastic toys your family got you on Christmas. Everything feels really inconsistent and cheap. The hitboxes are way out of place, which sometimes might be good for you. Even a slight elevation will fuck you up really hard. The controls feel really imprecise and floaty. You will press one button to dodge and your guy will fly one mile away from you. These new counters are as janky as they can get, especially the fair one. Half of the times your model will just bump into an enemy negating his attack, but the counter itself won't happen. And sometimes you will do a counter, it does connect and the attack goes through anyway. What the fuck? This fucking feature exists and I want to suffocate the one who made it a thing. Basically every time you press square, the game thinks that you started a combo and if you press triangle to execute, this happens. And now I cannot do it. Thank you Dark Souls. Yeah! Ah, I see. So they also copied the netcode from Dark Souls 1, really interesting. 
Neo 2 was supposed to be more polished and improve upon the mistakes of the first game, and in some ways it did, but then it literally knows that the back end. Bosses are still recycled over and over, side missions and gear grinding were not improved upon at all, half of the locations from side missions are recycled from the first game. Look at this for example, if I show you the screenshot, you would think that I am playing Neo 1 DLC of some kind. Some of the most annoying and hated bosses from Neo 1 are reskinned into Neo 2, like this Moonlight Butterfly boss that was my least favorite in Neo 1, and I am so glad to see it back in Neo 2, but now more ugly. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? This dude is basically this dude, but slightly more fun to fight. Only Rocky is back, because why wouldn't he be back? It never gets old to fight this guy. This Giga monster is pretty much the same as this one, but now you have to hit his arms instead of his feet. You already know people on Reddit are mad. Some of the levels are literally ripped from the first game with literally the same gimmicks and close to no new ideas. The new dark key dimension that is supposed to make key recovery harder just makes the fights more drawn out and more tedious. There are so many things that are wrong with these games, but at the same time, I really like them for some reason. How pleased you are to chop away, Jack the Ripper. The game does try a lot of new stuff. It doesn't try to be Dark Souls, it tries to be its own thing, which is something I can really respect. It's very unique. Like, I think that's what was good about it. It wasn't good right away, but the idea of it was more good. So it's like you have this unique battle system. It's not just a Souls-like or anything like that, but they've tried to innovate a little bit, build a new base or a new foundation. It wasn't just a replica of Souls, and because of that it had more potential. And some of the mechanics are actually amazing. I think Kodamas are really cool. They are basically these cute little dudes sprinkled around the map, and if you help them get back to the Bonfa army in Shrine, your as to Aimin medicine quantity will improve. It really makes exploration feel rewarding. I like the elemental system in both games, I think it is really cool and interesting. I am also a big fan of the Guardian spirits in both games, although I still prefer the spirits of the first game to the spirits of the second. I really like the cosmetic feel to the game, like armor transformation I mentioned earlier and skins. If you participate in the online mode a bit, you can unlock amazing skins, so you can play as some of the characters from the game, which is just awesome. But be prepared for your character to be looking really goofy in the cutscenes. Whoa! Yankee with no brim! One of the things that I really missed while writing the script is the replay value. And while talking to Faraz, this came to my attention. Yeah, the loot system. I'm not really one. I don't like any of that stuff. I know a lot of people do, but I don't like any of that stuff. I just like playing the game if I'm gonna play it. Yeah, but who actually likes it? There, there's like people who like to min-max and optimize, and they really like they they like loot. So they like games like Diablo and stuff like that. With Elden Ring as well, is that they made it open world. And unfortunately, like it's a really good game. Like I like Elden Ring a lot, but it takes away completely almost from its replayability. Taking like making Elden Ring open world, they unintended well, I I guess unintentionally I wouldn't say ruined, but changed something that kept a lot of Souls fans happy. I think Neo did the same thing when it did the loot thing with the randomized loot. It's like, yeah, it's a cool idea, but I don't think people like that. People like knowing where the Exile Greatsword is, or people like knowing where, like, you know, a certain pine resin is or a certain item is, so that they can just do a run, pick it up, and it feels good. So I guess even the gear grinding system can be overlooked. Maybe, I don't know, it still doesn't feel like my cup of tea, but maybe some people out there will find it interesting. And some mechanics are done really well. Like that one when you deal more damage if you hit the enemy from the back. Or that you can literally change the boss's behavior with magic. It adds this extra level of depth to the game that even games like Elden Ring did not. You can literally fight the last boss and say, hey, you know what? Fuck you. Now you do one move in an hour, oh and also you are as fast as a snail, or and you're also on fire now. It really feels like you are bending the rules of the game. It feels awesome. Uh, the game isn't really balanced in that in that respect. It's it's less that everything is viable and it's more that look, if you can figure out how to optimize this and break this, then that's the way you're gonna go. Bows and rifles, though the ranged combat in general is amazing, and taking someone's head off is one of the best things about the game. The amount of weapon types, moves and playstyles is also really, really out there. 
Replay value is also really good. Breaking someone's guard and slamming them on the ground feels amazing. AI quick draw is literally as satisfying as it can get. Certain enemies have weak points and if you hit them they lose a lot of their key and stagger for a long time, so the direction of your attack actually matters. That is why talking about this game is almost as hard as finding something even remotely interesting on r slash interesting as fuck. One of the main problems with this game is its overcomplication. Everything about the game is very hard to grasp. The combat is complicated. The weapons are complicated. The stats are complicated. The most brain dead process of smithing yourself a weapon is complicated. Seriously, who made this? Like it's, it's just like everything is like, oh, that's cool. Nothing is memorable. Nothing is like, oh, wow, that was amazing. It's just like, oh, that's cool. I remember trying to recommend this game to my dad, and he went like, well, okay, son, let me see. He played it for like 40 minutes and said, okay, you know what, I'm not playing that, and hopped right back in on Call of Duty. Also, the games are so unreasonably long, the second one especially felt like I was playing it for ages, and for the game that is completely out of ideas about at the middle point, it was a very stupid idea to make it that long. You will think that you are fighting the last boss, but in reality, you are not even close. The first game does this very weird move of ending the game on nothing, but then unlocking another story mission, which is basically the normal ending of the game anyway. Can someone explain why? Why don't you just call the day there? You already made like 100 missions, why not make it 101? But when you really dive into it, the game feels good. It feels fun until you hit the post game, but nevertheless. It's it's very hard to damage enemies until you do something to them, you get a status debuff or something. But then when you get that and you get effective at getting that, then it, it became it becomes really fun and really satisfying. It is fun to be a cool wizard samurai, it is not fun to listen to the story. It is fun to use magic and ninjutsu, and it is not fun to buff and debuff for half an hour before you can actually hit anything. It is fun to parry and guard back people, and it is not that fun that you cannot parry 99% of the enemies in the game. It is fun to kill demons, and it is not fun to slowly chip away 1% of their health while they insta kill you in a split second. And it is really fun to play the game, but it is not really fun to play the game. Because I didn't particularly enjoy Neo. I did not like the story. Uh, the story wasn't great. The mission system wasn't great. I wasn't super happy with the loot system or the randomization system. The movement was horrible. The bosses were, they were okay. It has a, a lot of really good ideas, exactly what you said, but it executes all of them poorly. And so like it didn't even, like, it didn't even need the story. The story was such a waste of time and it didn't need all these side missions and all of these things like they, they did too much um, uh, almost what are you supposed to be a disappointment if you already start for some more difficult and soul-like games definitely give neo a try and yes i still recommend that you start from the first game despite all of its problems just go in and do not expect a flawless masterpiece of a game that should be on par with sekiro in terms of combat Oh, and please, for the love of God, do not become one of those people under every comment section of every souls like screaming, Oh, you think that's hard? Try Neo, it's way, way harder. You're probably going to die like a thousand times. Well, I didn't because I'm just that good, and I watched all the guys on YouTube. The Neo fan base, like the people that really liked Neo, uh, not all like this, but they were majorly like this from what I can tell in chat, where they were the hardcore of the hardcore Souls fans that were just like, you know, Souls is too easy, Neo is harder, therefore it's better. It is a flawed game, or a flawed masterpiece I might say, but it's still something unique. If it doesn't feel like your cup of tea, don't even bother, you will not like it. The game had a low budget and it really shows, but with a budget like this, some of the decisions they made start to be even more questionable. But what I do want to see is their new title. This shit looks awesome, and it is basically Neo meets Elden Ring, and I really want to see how it will come out, especially since I find so much potential in Neo. If the game is just slightly bit more polished, it would be so good. And if you have already tried the games before, please write what you think about the series in the comments, I'm really curious about what you guys think. Anyway, now I really do want to play something relaxing. What's on my list next? Ah, fuck.